All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kudabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the CSA Conteres and IP mod, which is yet another lovely addition in this series of parts packs being made by form user Hraban. And this particular one looks to add in a variety of parts inspired by the Japanese Space Program, and that is pretty sweet. So let's head right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what what we do get now let's grab ourselves a mark one command pod for size comparison's sake and actually bring it up a bit as there are two parts that are particularly large and then of course turn on our janitor's closet mod filter just leaving conteres and ip and we'll start as we always do with the command pods and the first one is actually one of the few things i do know about the Japanese Space Agency. I honestly don't know a huge amount about JAXA, but the Hope XL was a cancelled project, I think back in the late 80s or somewhere around there, for a small Japanese shuttle. And I love having this in the game because it's just such a cool design and I've always loved these sort of small shuttle space planes. They've always intrigued me. Now this particular one will hold two Kerbals. It is an un man command pod though it has a built-in ablator for re-entry data transmitter it does have deployable solar panels if we right click and extend there and the solar panel also acts as basically a small bay for science experiments additional parts etc as you got a fair amount of room in there to stick a couple of things which is pretty good now of course it is a shuttle so the thing is a lifting surface and has built-in RCS, reaction wheel, the typical crew report, 850 electric charge, and 800 monopropellant. And overall is a, just a pretty cool capsule. I think this is probably my favorite part in this entire mod because it's just so cool. Now we do of course have an attachment point down at the bottom. We do also have an attachment point up at the top, perfect for a docking port or something along those lines. And all in all, just a very very cool capsule now let's pop that off and go to the next one the ktv crew transport vehicle which there we go if we pop on a pretty standard looking uh, command pod here and uh will hold up to four kerbals again does have a built-in ablator it does require at least one crew member to operate it does have a built-in reaction wheel sas crew report 600 electric charge and 400 monopropellant all in all pretty good and the final one is the ktv2 avionics module which if we pop on there is a very interesting looking thing but i do quite like it because it is an unmanned command pod so great for you know first stages of space stations big satellites etc but also as you can see here it has a number of built-in solar panels which i mean of course you can also see along the side which is is pretty great each one producing 0.5 electric charge per second now beyond that we do have a reaction wheel SAS 800 electric charge and 500 monopropellant now uh, next in the fuel tanks category we have the h1 a first stage which is one of those uh larger parts i was talking about which can be attached radially but also does of course have attachment points on the top and bottom for use on you know smaller sized rockets though i mean small as in width wise not length that is pretty tall and oh actually just keep it on there while i talk about the stats and of course it does hold 916 liquid fuel and 1119 oxidizer now the next one we have is the h1 a second stage a bit smaller there but still nonetheless a very good tank holding 94.5 liquid fuel and 115.5 oxidizer we then have another very tall tank the h2a first stage tank I always do like the ones with the piping down the side. It is just good to me. And this has 1,134 liquid fuel and 1,386 oxidizer in this one. And then, we, of course, we have the H2B first stage tank. Actually, though, they're both called first stage. I was about to say, was that the second stage? And I just said it wrong. No, oh, I guess that's H2A. There we go. <laughs> 
Oh, naming. And this is the H2B first stage. Oh, much bigger. Much bigger. That's what I thought on those two. I, I, I knew they were different sizes, but the name, the name quickly got to me there. And then, of course, holds 2,000 liquid fuel and 2,404 oxidizer. And just a very nice large orange tank. We then have the H2B second stage, which is pretty awesome and does have a uh, attachment point right here just at the very edge of it and also one lower down which is meant for of course the fairing so of course you attach your engine sort of right there and then your fairing there or decoupler rather down here but a very good little tank and holds 225 liquid fuel and 275 oxidizer and of course if we take that one off and grab the next the h3b second stage holding 400 liquid fuel and 489 oxidizer and again it does have the attachment points a bit south for the decoupler and uh higher up and as you can see on this one we actually have a two attachment points points in sort of inside of it one right there and one right there so you can actually attach two engines just on the inside of this particular tank which is interesting I actually do kind of like that and then finally here in the tank category we have the h3 second stage 1n which holds a 400 liquid fuel and 489 oxidizer but I think is kind of broken at the moment because as you can see it has an engine at the bottom, but there are no stats for an engine in here. And in fact, it has no engine. You, you can't control it or anything when you're out on the launch pad. So I don't know why, but I mean, it's there. Hopefully that does get fixed in the future. It would be nice as you know, it is a good looking little tank, but for now, and it's kind of a wasted part in my mind. Now let's zoom back out and head to the engine category where we have first the H2B SRB, which can be of course radially attached or popped in there with uh, the attachment point and does have 288 max thrust and 282 engine ISP. And of course is a solid rocket booster. Very nice, very powerful. We also have another solid rocket booster down here, the RKNTX354, which has a max thrust of 39, engine ISP of 265, and is, you know, just a nice small little thing. There we go. We then also have the KTV OML engine, which does have, of course, a max of 18 kilonewtons of thrust, 340 ISP in vacuum, is using liquid fuel and oxidizer and does have built into it 125 liquid fuel, 80 monopropellant, and 165 oxidizer, as well as two interior attachment points, one up at the top for putting an additional engine, or of course the one on the bottom for your decoupler. Very nice to have right there. Now the next one we have here is the RK0100F, which has a max thrust of 275 kilonewtons and max ISP of 446. And there we go, just a nice a stout little engine with, uh, yeah, just a... Uh, just there. Very good. And then we have the RK0120F with 345 kilonewtons max thrust, 445 on the engine ISP. Very similar engine, just, you know, slightly more powerful. And then it's, uh, I guess you'd say little brother, the RKNMB3III, which is right there and has 189 kilonewtons of max thrust and 290 max ISP. There we go. And finally, the rkn 0 05B, a bit more standard looking of an engine with a max thrust of 75, max ISP of 447, liquid fuel and oxidizer in 3 degree gimbling range, overall a good little engine. Now uh, we next have our parts in structural, where we have the H2A a single adapter, which of course is good for putting an engine there. We then also do have a bi adapter for two engines, or a triple adapter for three, and then also the KTV2 capsule adapter. Or, you know, adapting your capsule and goes quite nicely right there. Very good, very nice parts. Let's pop those off and head into coupling where we have the CRDH2, which is a really big decoupler. Really big decoupler for very, very large parts, say, I don't know, one of those larger 2.5 meter size engines. 
And, well, it's, yeah, uh, just a giant decoupler. Very fun. We then have the CSDH2B decoupler, which is a more uh, standard-looking decoupler there. Excellent. And I guess a bit of an adapter in size. And then the HXLD decoupler, which is specifically meant to decouple the Hope XL, as it is oddly shaped perfectly for that to fit in right there, which is good. Now, we have nothing in payload, nothing in aerodynamics, nothing in ground, thermal, and electrical. We do have the KTV solar panel, which is just a nice, lovely little solar panel there. Pretty simple, but useful, and will produce 3.5 electric charge per second. And there we go. And nothing in communication, nothing in science, but finally in utility, we have three last parts. All again for that KTV, we have the KTV two pressurized storage module which we can pop on there and as you can see does have a whole load of new solar panels for you to get some power and a hundred mono propellant we also have the ktv2 storage module again with multiple solar panels for energy and again this one a thousand mono propellant and then finally the ktv2 adapter which is you know just an adapter and is built to uh as it says here an adapter for for adding a docking port. And uh, yeah, yeah, nice little parts. Nice little parts indeed. And that is all of the parts that we do have for this CSA Contreras NIP mod. So let's take a quick look at a monstrosity of a ship that I built earlier. And I truly do mean a monstrosity. I know for a fact that this thing will never make it into space because I designed it just by slapping a load of parts together just to see what all I could use from the mod. In fact, when I tested it earlier, it started spinning uncontrollably. But here it is! <laughs> I threw the Hope XL up at the top, as I said, it is my favorite part in this whole thing. And then this lower section, using that odd fuel tank with an engine that doesn't work. So to power it, I gave it the small little thrusters. And then we have the giant H2B first stage tank here, with uh, several of the larger H2B SRBs at the bottom, with those very large decouplers, which I really do like the look of them. They fit that perfectly. Perfectly. Just look at that. They uh, just kind of sl uh, slot right in there very nicely. So yes, let's go and fly this monstrosity, and I definitely use fly in the loosest sense of the term. <laughs> if you spent a lot more time, you could definitely build some fun, interesting spacecraft with this thing. And in fact, when you download the mod, it actually does come with some uh, uh, save files, some uh, craft files. There's the terminology for you to actually build some proper NIP rockets. But I felt, why not make this monstrosity? It just seems like the right thing to do. So yes, here is our CSA Contreras NIP rocket. So let us uh, launch and see how horribly it flies. Oh, it's gonna go so wrong. Launch! There we go. Now, I gotta say, I really, really do love these SRBs. They have a lot of power and do run for quite some time. And the only problem is I don't have a whole lot of control on this thing. I mean, this does have some gimbling. And uh, I believe this engine, yeah, also has gimbling. But just because this thing is so horribly weighted, there it goes. It starts spinning around uncontrollably. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's just deal with that for the moment. And we'll probably release these uh, SRBs shortly because, well, that just seems like the thing to do, like right now. Haha, -ha, we didn't explode. And as you can see, I do use the KTV OML in there with another secondary engine inside of it. So we do actually have two engines in that back portion going. Oh, those things are spinning towards their demise. Lovely. So let us release this section too. Oh, meant to cut. There we go. And launch beautiful beautiful <laughs> now I have unfortunately no gimbling whatsoever on these rockets but they're actually surprisingly working well for us at the moment oh wow huh I'll be darned I didn't think the oh nope nope there it goes there it goes <laughs> Oh, I love my horrible, horrible creation sometimes. Just to show off the parts, that's purely what it's here for. But let us release it, and I don't know, see if maybe we can 
glide this thing. It is a lifting surface. Oh, I turned on the RCS. There we go. Viewing the built-in RCS engines. And we actually are gliding fairly well. Look at that. I honestly didn't expect it to glide so well. <laughs> and of course, we have the RCS engines uh, helping us out there. I did not put any landing gear on this thing, but we're heading for the ocean anyway. So, you know. Oh, well. <laughs> there we go. Let's... Uh... I guess just try and land this thing. But yes, that is the CSA Contaries and IP mod. A lovely selection of Japanese-inspired space parts, which is pretty cool. Uh, JAXA really doesn't get as much love in this game as it surely does deserve. I, I very rarely see parts inspired by them. And there we go. We have actually landed safely from that monstrous launch. I mean, we're kind of underwater, but yeah, yeah, it works. So yes, if you'd like to check out this mod for yourself, which I would definitely recommend you go and do, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is gonna be it for today, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course, you do come back for the next episode, when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until then, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.